Hi, I'm Bill Hodges. Spotlight on Government is not conflict television, but rather a safe and sane place for public servants to express their views and communicate directly with their constituents. Those who would scream and yell to rudely disrupt informational meetings have no place on our show. However, if you are one of the people who really wants to learn what's happening at all levels of government, this is the place for you. Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and this is Spotlight on Government, and we have with us today Representative Seth McKeel, District 63, House of Representatives, Florida. It's fabulous to have you with us. You've been really busy this last six months. It's been a busy time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. What's gone on in the legislature? Well, it's an interesting time in government. There's no question. Uh, as I've shared with you before, I mean, there, we... Um, have been dealing with a, a dramatic reduction in, in um, the budget. I because, guess. Because, uh, because the economy, um, you know, in, in Florida has uh, certainly hurt Floridians, hurt businesses in, in Florida, and the numbers of, of housing transactions and automobile transactions and the, the transactions in the economy that, that, that send dollars to the state treasury have been dramatically reduced. Um, when I came to the legislature in, in 2006, we spent we had an overall state budget of about seventy four and a half billion dollars and we left last month or two two months ago passing a budget of about sixty four and a half million dollars so you can see um, you know we, we've had a dramatic reduction in in what we've had the, the resources that we've had to, to spend on government services. I, I get nosebleeds when we start talking billions of dollars. A billion is a big number. <laughs> yeah, anytime it starts with a B, that's a big number. That's right. Bill. That's, that's huge. Yes, and we, we cut the budget by $10 billion, roughly? Over the last three years, that's exactly, that's exactly right. And, and um, you know, primarily, that's, a, as, again, as a result of, of, of the economy. But it's, impo it's an important thing for folks to understand that, that Taxpayers in Florida, in my opinion, have a, um, a very good protection, and that is that we are constitutionally mandated to balance the budget. Unlike the situation in California, so to speak, where we, we can only spend the dollars that we, that, that we generate. We, we have to balance the budget. Um, so what, what, what we saw happening is that the, the revenues that it would take to produce the same amount of services the prior year, we weren't taking in as much money. So we were going, so the only way to deal with that, you have only two options, is either raise the revenues, go back to, to taxes, or reduce, or reduce spending. The bottom line is we did, we did a little bit of both of that. We've cut about nine, like I said, about nine and a half billion over several years out of the budget. We also in, increased some revenue. We increased about a billion dollars through um, through some fee increases, but also through um, um, some some gambling expansion, um, which, which candidly I did not support. But but through, I'm not sure that I like the idea of giving one group a uh, monopoly on gambling. But that's a whole different show. Right. Uh, no, I agree with you, and I didn't support. I don't support. I haven't voted for any of the expansions of, of gambling. I I, I don't um, I don't support. I think we ought to be getting our revenue from other revenue sources that generate income and generate industry and generate jobs uh, uh, and, and are not um, preying on, on some of the most, most vulnerable Floridians. But, but that said, that's where we are and, and, and that's, um, that's the situation that we're in. So yeah, there's no question it's been a busy time to be, to be in government. And, um, I, I'm not totally against gambling. Uh, sure. you know, I've, I've been known, I was in Las Vegas here recently and sure. spent three days and lost three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good for you. Huh? I didn't win any at all. Right. But, but the fact is, you know, for myself, but, you know, I, I remember a friend of ours years ago who was very well situated as a young person, lived in a hotel in Washington, her family was very wealthy, and they had a maid. And every day the maid would ask to see the paper because she'd paid 25 cents for the numbers. It wasn't a state lottery. And Nancy said to her one day, why do you waste your money? She said, because every morning you get up, you know you're going on to law school or you're going on to this. Every morning I get up, I know I'm going to clean toilets. That 25 cents is a way of possibly getting me out of this. So gambling does give some people hope, but it gives a lot of people pain, and I'm with you on that. And it gives some people despair. And, yeah. and, and, and when you have, and also there's another, there are other problems associated with it with respect to crime and the other 
things, and when you have 67 sheriffs telling you that you ought not to ought not to do this, I think really? it, I think it was not good policy for the state. But that you know that said, we 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 are we, that was not the biggest increase in in revenue. That was approximately 200 million potentially um, in in revenues to which the state, which is a drop in the bucket. Which when you talk I mean, about it's a, a fairly good drop. When but you talk about 10 billion dollars in yeah. the shortfall, um, you know that that's um, it's not not a significant bite at the apple. But your biggest thing, I think, in the legislature is energy, is it not? Yes, sir. I spend most of my time doing energy work. So let's talk about energy today because sure. I know you, that's near and dear to your heart and a lot of things you want to discuss about it. So let's go with energy. Sure. My, you know, I'm, con I'm concerned about Florida's energy future um, in, in, on a lot of levels. Um, Florida is a peninsula, so we, we have to import uh, the bulk of our energy um, from, uh, you know, we, we take natural gas, comes across in, in pipelines, we import oil through our, all of the ports um, in, in Florida. Um, what we've never participated in is the supply side of the equation. Um, and so you've seen, it's certainly been in, in the press recently, but you've seen me take a, take a position, which actually, it's only the last year that we've actually gained some momentum on it. I filed the legislation three years in a row encouraging um, Congress to lift lift the ban on drilling offshore um, in in Florida, and um, in the last year we we really have gotten some momentum as as folks have realized that that, that really we're not only are we leaving them on a lot of money on the table from Florida's budget perspective, we're leaving uh, we're leaving the potential for a, a really great boost in our economy on on the table, and so I've really worked hard on on that issue. I think it's high time. We we know the technology is there to to extract oil and natural gas in a clean, environmentally safe, environmentally sound, and not unsightly way. Um, and so while we have the barges coming in and out of Florida, the potentially dangerous part of that business, it makes all the sense in the world that we should allow Florida to participate in the revenue piece of that, the revenue piece of that picture. Alabama funds 10% of their state government from leases and, and revenue derived from, from that business. And, and actually Alaska sends out checks. And Alaska sends out their, checks to, to their individual people to constituents as and a part of that. The state of Louisiana is just shy of a billion dollars a year, um, and we anticipate with Florida's leases and the and the um, and the reserves that are that are off Florida, we anticipate much more than that, um, and and the potential really to to have a dramatic impact on our budget, but also our our economy. We've been trying, we've been talking so for so long. All all politicians have been talking for a long time about diversifying the economy and attracting high skill, high wage jobs. The lowest job in this industry is seventy-six thousand dollars, and so these are high skill, high wage, high really? tech, high tech jobs. Yes, sir. The lowest one of these uh, that, that these people we be bringing in is seventy-six thousand dollars, and so we're talking about a dramatic expansion of a new industry in the state that also happens to contribute revenue. So we don't have to go tax people. We don't have to go prey on gambling interests or prey on prey on vulnerable people. We can bring an industry to the state that's clean, that's environmentally safe. That that is that is, um, that, that is well um, well done, and, and in Florida we have to make sure it's done right and done and done well because we have so much of an of an investment to protect, um, while also contributing to our economic base as well as our state revenue picture. Now, now you mentioned the barges. It, sure. You're not proposing that we would put refineries in the state of Florida, or are you? Well, currently, the bulk of the refining the refining business is in other parts of other parts of the Gulf. At this point, most of that would stay would stay there. And, so we would still have the barges. Try, right, we would still potentially have the barges. I think uh, our policy to be real. Let me be real frank about what the what the policy would do. Currently, there's a moratorium, but there are two moratoriums. There's a federal moratorium in federal waters on any type of expansion or exploration. There's a state moratorium inside state waters. What our legislation does is is A, encourage Congress to lift the federal piece, but B, allow the state cabinet to entertain proposals and, um, and to entertain proposals for those leases inside state water. So all of the details of that should be figured out. They shouldn't be written in statute. In other words, you shouldn't write what the specific technology is, where the where all that goes, where the different facilities go, you should leave that to the Minerals Management Service and you should let the cabinet interview those people. And, and, and the legislative proposal is simply giving the authority to the cabinet um, to, to have the conversation. At this point in Florida, we don't even, the, the cabinet doesn't even have the uh, authority to have the conversation. With the state and the Fed, 
could could we decide in Florida waters to go ahead and drill now yes, without sir. the Fed agreeing also? Yes, sir. Inside state inside state waters, which really? is that. W How far does our state waters go? That's 10 miles. That's within 10, 10 miles. miles. Yes, sir. So, so really, and 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 our proposal that doesn't um, envision anything visible inside of six miles. Um, there there are oil reserves inside of six miles that would be that would be gotten at through directional drilling or even some off onshore directional drilling, but there'd be nothing visible above surface um, out and, and inside of inside of six miles. Uh, I was really against drilling for a long time and I have to admit that I'm not convinced about it yet because sure. I'm afraid whenever we tap our oil reserves here in this country <laughs> and we lower the cost of fuel for one thing it makes us foolish. I remember back in 73 when we went through the first oil crisis and we did nothing. Correct. We got more hungry for oil if anything than we did now because we quit using coal. Correct. Uh, I'm afraid that if we start with 3% of the world's reserves and 25% of the use, we can't drill our way out of this. We've got to go to other things. How will this help us to go to other energy resources? Two answers to that question. Um, the first is the, the, the picture you describe is on, it was only oil. The, the, we have huge reserves in this country of natural gas, and, and we know that the, the country is being powered on natural gas right now through... Um, and, and the state of Florida is headed to 50% dependent on natural gas for electricity production. Um, so that's the, f the, the first answer is, you know, you've got, you got two uh, energy um, resources that need, to be, that need to be dealt with. The oil is one piece, the natural gas is the other. So the second piece is that, that we have worked very hard in the state to position ourselves to participate in renewable energies solar, wind, biomass, uh, other things. The problem we have in Florida is the research and the technology is not advanced enough to give us um, a, re a return on that investment yet. In other words, it's not, adva it's not far enough along to go commercial with some of these technologies and we've got to invest, Florida has got to invest more dollars into the research and development of the technologies to bring renewable resources. Our goal would be to get to 20% renewable energy in, in the state for all of the electricity production. That's a very good goal and um, I, hope that we, I hope that we can get there. Currently, we're at 1.8%. <laughs> and so we've got a long way to go, and we've got a lot of investment that government needs to make. But as I just finished talking to you about the position we're in budgetarily, we don't have the resources to invest right now as we should. And so our, our proposals tie a significant amount of the revenue associated from offshore oil and natural gas exploration to the research and development of renewable technologies. And so that's, the, that's really an important key. We've got to find a revenue source to, to do the research and development for renewable resources, and I think this is a, a perfect avenue for, to, to give us the opportunity to do that. I think more people would come on board if we really, really believed that government was going to use this windfall, if you will, to put it to work and make it work for the future rather than spending for additional things today. Well, two is there any way we can guarantee that that'll mm. happen? Two answers to that. My, I mean, I'm, I'm one of 160 members of the legislature, but I'll give you my opinion on it, and, and that is that, it, in my opinion, the two primary areas where we ought to be spending the dollars that, are, that come from this particular revenue source are, A, investing in renewable technologies, that w what I just finished talking about, and B, education. Um, we know that the state of Louisiana and the state of Texas fund almost their entire education system through lease revenues from, from the oil and natural gas industries. We know that we are pretty much choked right now on the education system in Florida. We, we don't have any more available dollars to, to, to spend and we, have, and we have needs that are out there. So I think those are the two primary areas that I see um, that, that we ought to be spending the, the revenues from this, um, from, from offshore exploration. Well, I moved to Florida in roughly 2000. Mm -hmm. Just as the boom came with housing right. and the taxes that were generated by houses selling for more and more and more. And I grew up on a farm. be honest with you, no matter how much we threw in the trough for the hogs, the hogs would line up and eat it. And they want more. And, and it scares me when I see any new initiative coming with dollars. Uh, I look at the universities in this state and the professors and the university management are earning huge sums and they're 
always saying, well, yeah, but if we don't pay this, then Georgia will, and they'll move over there. And then Georgia says, but Florida's paying more. And the teacher down at the bottom gets very little in comparison to what these people at the top are getting. Yeah, and we could that. pour more money into the education, but I know where it's going to go if it's the past is any description of the future. I want to see this money. If you're going to drill in the Gulf, I think most people would like to see this money not put into all these other projects, but to go to giving us solar and wind and all the other things that will make us energy efficient later on. I, com I completely, completely agree with you. The solar piece is important. The solar is probably the most um, promising renewable technolo technology and biomass. Those two are prob probably the most promising technologies for, for Florida. The wind piece is, actually, is not as promising for Florida, number one, because we don't have the, consist the constant wind currents, um, consistency uh, more than we have lots of gusts um, and when we have storms and things like that, but we don't have the consistency. So we know that those two technologies are probably the key. The biomass piece um, from a fuel perspective is probably the most promising for Florida agriculture. Um, and, and I completely agree that, that and as, you, as I said, that's where we need to be investing uh, a lot of our resources. But doesn't biomass carry with it another problem? Uh, I don't see how biomass is going to be a whole lot different than what we've already done to the glades and to all this, all this fertilizer running off. Because biomass requires that you have to grow something. To grow something, you've got to use fertilizers. And we've already got a dead spot in the out there in the Bay of Florida that's huge because of all this runoff. How would you do bio biomass without adding to that problem? Well, we know, one, I'll, I'll answer that in two, two ways. First of all, we know that um, <laughs> produce, Florida has a unique opportunity to produce renewable biofuel that is, not, that, are, that is not made from food crops. One problem we are seeing in the United States is as we move towards renewable fuels that are made from corn where the price of corn's going up <laughs> and, right. and, and it's in everything and and when you and when you start to when you start to cannibalize your food your food source that's a bad position to put the United States in to put to put America in the one thing that we've got left in America is that we produce more than enough food for ourselves and we export we export food in fact we pay some the government pays folks to to grow some food we and and we've got to maintain that posi that position. The one thing that bio that biomass brings to to Florida is primarily, um, particularly if you, you talk about the the sugar industry, a lot of it is produced from the byproduct of those industries. In other words, these are already this is waste product that is that is already in production. So these are crops and these are um, gr uh, groves and things like that that are already in production, and it's using the waste product from from those. Um, operations and making it in, making it into fuel as opposed to... Oh, so to we're using uh, things that we have to store, or destroy, or, or mm -hmm. do or something with, we can make it into that's exactly, biomass. That's exactly right, using the waste products of the, of the crops that already exist now as opposed to, that's why Florida is in a unique perspective, is to, we have the opportunity to use the waste product as opposed to um, growing new crops to again to cannibalize our to cannibalize ourselves like the like the corn industry is doing for for corn based ethanol. And, um, and there's already riots in various countries because corn is getting too expensive. Yes, that's exact that, that's exactly right. And so I think you know using y using the bagasse and the and the and the byproducts of of some of the existing crops that we already have in Florida is the way to go. But there's got to be more more research and development. You've got to get it from a concept to to commercialization and to production. And we um, and 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 Florida's got to we've got to have to spend some dollars to get there to and and I think so so that's why I believe that a significant piece of the revenue generated from our initiative on offshore exploration should be in that direction. Well, politics is the art of compromise. I think Winston Churchill said that. I'm, I'm not positive, but in order to get the drilling, it's going to require a lot of people to buy on and sign off, and I suspect that it will be very difficult to say this pot of money is going to go just to energy. True, true. I mean, obviously, I mean, you, you, what, what you said about education is, is, is true uh, um, for the most part. However, uh, I speak, uh, I do a lot of work in the community college system, and we have a lot of significant investments that need to be made in the community college system because in order to attract the industry, that we want to attract to the state, we've got to be able to turn some of these um, turn some of these degree offerings out more more quickly. 
um, and we've we've really gutted the community college system in the last couple of years because of our because of budget cuts. So, I I think there are um, I, you know I, I think there are still areas in, in education where we've got some work to do. That's my my opinion. I know a lot about like I said higher ed, and I think we've got some some work to do, particularly in the community college system, in turning out um, you know degree um, workforce degrees. Um, and, and, and degreed associates to, to, to work for some of the companies that we're trying to attract to, to Florida. So I think that you're, you're exactly right. Everybody will be scrambling for money. That'll be our, that'll be our job to figure out how we, how, how we <laughs> dole out, how you, how, much. how you dole out the money. But I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take that problem. Um, you know, I think that's a, that's a problem that we can, um, <laughs> we can figure out how to handle. Let's move from that for a minute into transportation. Sure. Because I think that's probably one of the things that a lot of people are looking at today. How do I move from A to B and do it efficiently? We can't afford to build bigger and bigger and wider and wider highways. And keep adding lanes. Yeah. Route 4 between Tampa and, well, it goes right through your district. Yes, sir. I don't have to tell you about how bad Route 4 is. I'd go anywhere not to have to go through there. In fact, from Sun City, I generally go the back roads all the way around, so I don't have to go up through As there. As do I. <laughs> now, what can we look forward to transportation-wise? If... If the stimulus package comes into Florida, which I hope it does, because we have fooled to let it sit on the table, can we expect the high-speed rapid transit to be started in this state? Sure, I think um, that that's a great question. I, I agree with you that if we're already, if, if uh, I, I'm not sure if I were in Congress, I would have voted for the stimulus package. I think a lot of the money was was is not not well spent. That said, the best money that is in the stimulus package, the 8 or 10 percent that, that goes to transportation infrastructure is, in my opinion, the best piece of the stimulus package, and I agree that I hope we, hope we are able to take advantage of that. One of, the, in, one of the things I've enjoyed about being in the legislature and being on the Hillsborough County delegation has been um, my chairmanship of what we call the Bay Area Legislative Delegation, which, is, uh, which I have, will come into next year, and that is a nine-county region surrounding Tampa Bay um, and, and it's made up of all of the legislators of the, that nine county region. And um, one of the prime initiatives of the Bay Area Legislative Delegation has been the, the T BARDA e effort, or the, um, which, which is the goal of T BARDA is the Regional Transit of Transportation Authority to, to assemble all of these projects. You've got the high speed project that hopefully runs, at the end of the day, I hope it runs all the way from Tampa to the East Coast. Um, we've also got a lot of projects in, in and out in the, in the central Tampa Bay area to help move people around. Um, and I think the, 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 the Bay Area Legislative Delegation's efforts towards, towards T-BARTA have been very successful. We funded them the last two years for all of the design and all of the study for, for this, um, for this um, sort of planned out combination of projects. In other words, not just taking project by project and, and hitting, hitting and missing throughout the region, but taking a regional approach and saying, where, where is it that we need to move people to and what's the most effective way to do it? And I think um, you're going to be very happy with some of the results of the T. Barna studies. Well, I understand as a result of that, we're kind of at the top of the list on this federal funds, too. That's because of because the work. Because of all the work done. you guys have done. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. Because of the, the legwork that's been, and I'm not going to take credit for it, we, the, the Bay Area Legislative Delegation has, has supported it very heavily, but it's primarily the, um, the T. Barna staff and the DOT staff that have helped us put this plan together. And you're exactly right, put us in position. To, to be um, able to attract the, the federal dollars. So, I mean, it's that, you know, that kind of regional planning takes a long time. I and mean, we've been working on this project for five or six years. And, and sometimes, you know, sometimes that's part of this business where you have to plod along and, and do the planning. But, but the You may not even the, be there to see the end of it. You may not even be there to see the end of it, but it's the right thing to do. And I think we, um, so, so I think the answer to your question is, is, is a affirmative. I mean, that's our goal is to have, to be able to more effectively move people throughout the region. And the other thing that the, 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 the T-BARDA has done is work on cooperation with the Metroplan Orlando uh, group and have a, what we call a super regional approach um, to this. In other words, take their plan. We need and, that. Yeah, take their plan and put it together. So there have been some really, I've been very encouraged by the super regional meetings that have happened between those two, um, between those two regions and try to really do a great job bridging the entire central Florida um, span um, from, a, from, a, from a transportation standpoint. So I think there's really encouraging planning going on right now if we can 
through stimulus, through hopefully state investment going going forward, if we can put the dollars to the to the map, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll we'll be well positioned. I promised you a minute's time that you could talk about anything you wanted directly to your constituents. What would you like to tell them? Well, you know, candidly, I would say I would say thank you very much for the opportunity that they give me to serve. It's certainly a, a, a privilege to serve in the Florida House of Representatives. Um, it's a challenging time, but there's no question that we have budgetary challenges. But I think we're taking the right approach, and that is, you know, a, a, a reduction in, in, in overall state government services, but trying to maintain a level of quality and not overtax our citizens. And I think that's the balance that we're trying to reach. And I would just um, I would just take a minute to to thank my constituents for the opportunity they give me to serve. You know, this is not a full-time job being a representative. What is it you do in the real world? My wife and mm -hmm. I have a small company. We're in the real estate business together. We, we, um, I sell some commercial real estate, and she sells some residential real estate, and we, we help each other so out. So you're a broker? We help each other out as we can, right, in the real and estate business. And the brokerage business. is what? Uh, we're, we're under Keller Williams, which there Keller are five, Williams? five okay. Keller Williams offices in this area, and we're... One of those, and that's what we do in our real world. Fine, fine company. I've that's got right. several friends that work for Keller Williams here in the Tampa Bay area, and they all enjoy it very it's much. It's a great company. You know, it's difficult to be a representative because I imagine your phone rings off the hook constantly with people wanting to do this, that, and another thing. Do you find that difficult? Um, I find, I mean, shifting gears is a little bit difficult sometimes during the day where you have to shift from your private work to your public work, but th and that's sometimes difficult. But the phone ringing off the hook is not, is not a problem. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy meeting the folks, um, you know, who I talk to. So it's, I don't think the demands of the, of, of the people, that's the, that's the rewarding part of the job is, is helping people and talking to people and hearing what's going on out there in the community. To me, that's the rewarding part. The challenging part, you're right, is sometimes just shifting gears between the multiple tasks that you that you have to do. But you, but um, you know, the most important one I have to do is be a dad and a husband, and and um, I, I try to um, I try to make sure that one always takes always takes time. Well, I, I think being in politics, that's some that a couple others ought to have thought about real hard, <laughs> <laughs> because there's too many people watching. I, I don't understand people like Governor Stanford. You know. Oh. Too many people watching. You know, I've gone to the Appalachian Trail. Come on. Right, right, right. And I'm, I'm down in there. But I really yeah. appreciate your coming on the show. Thank you. And to talking about the issues that people want to hear about and be willing to field questions and defend positions. It's really great that a person like yourself will walk in. And we didn't beforehand decide we're going to talk about this, that, or another thing. You just said, ask me anything you want. And that's yeah. what I did. Sure. Well, I appreciate the opportunity very much. Thanks so much, Bill. And thanks for all you do for the community. Oh, you're very welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bill Hodges. This is Spotlight on Government. You're unique, you're special, and you're great. Tell yourself so often because you are, you know, and we'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government. And again, Representative McKeel, thanks for being here. Thanks again. Hi, I'm Bill Hodges. Spotlight on Government is not conflict television, but rather a safe and sane place for public servants to express their views and communicate directly with their constituents. Those who would scream and yell to rudely disrupt informational meetings have no place on our show. However, if you are one of the people who really wants to learn what's happening at all levels of government, this is the place for you.